beginning. We all come to a story with hopes and expectations, looking for an answer. Sometimes it would be better to live with that hope without ever knowing the full story. In a horror story, there are only victims and monsters. And the trick is not to end up as either. But trapped by the genre, we are all ripped to pieces along the way. This is not the story I hoped it would be. This is not the ending I wanted. This story will eat us alive. This story is a monster. And monsters wear many faces.
powers of the Sith. I need to finish this. might take a little longer than I thought. I'm sorry I've been gone so much lately, Logan. Oh my god, Mom, it's not your fault people get all murdery. What happened? Just work stuff. Right. Well, Dad and I are just watching the latest episode of Night Springs here. Mom, it's so good. No spoilers. I'll let you get back to the show. You were supposed to wait and watch with me. I love you both. This is what happens when you go on work trips, Mom. Love you, too. And say hi to Casey. Tell him to stop brooding so much. Logan! I will. Bye, kiddo. Logan thinks you should try cheering up. <laughs> Snarky kid. Wonder where she gets that from. be a coincidence that another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Feels like the killer's leaving us a message. Hmm. I'm glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. It's right up your alley. You should take lead. Think of me as the backup. Okay. Any words of advice? Nothing that would cheer anyone up. Aldrin Lake. Time to get to work. A deputy was supposed to be here to show us to the crime scene. There's the car, so where's the deputy? <laughs> Eaten by a bear? I'll check out that map. Worth memorizing before we get swallowed up by the trees. I should take a look at that map. I think I hear someone. Could be our deputy. I can go take a look.
Gordon, I'm up here now. <laughs> That's just how the cookie crumbled. Hey, over here. Hey there. Agent Casey, right? Sheriff Breaker said you'd be coming by to take over the case. You're half right. Anderson? Saga Anderson. I'll be leading this case. Seems you already know my partner, Alex Casey. Gee. Sorry about that, ma'am. I'm Deputy Mulligan. I just figured that, you know, that, uh... Federal agents right here, Thornton. My partner, Thornton, <laughs> down at the crime scene. He's not what you call the sharpest axe in the shed. Right here? What do you mean? I mean, it was you? Oh, shit! They didn't hear me, did they? What can you tell us about the crime scene? Tell them about the heart. I was getting to that, Thornton. Well, we reckon there are some, uh, organs that are currently outside the victim's person when they should be, well, you know, inside. Were there any witnesses? Yeah, a couple out-of-towners. I wonder what they were doing sneaking around the woods at night. I mentioned the city folk. They're pretty suspicious. Not that we have anything against city folk, cried Thornton. But don't worry. Sheriff Breaker took him back to town a while ago. I want to see the body. How do we get there? Oh, sure. That's real simple. Just through the hole in the fence, down the hill towards the lake, around the old convenience store. You can't miss it. Everything's been closed since the area was fenced off. The store, the campground, all of it. They got it, Thornton. Before we get to the crime scene, there's time to review the facts of the case so far. Make sure I'm seeing the clues clearly. The Mind Place. My version of the Mind Palace technique. To sift through clues and work the case. Building the mind place again for each case. Using each field office as a model in my head. The facts are on the board. Everything we know about the previous murders. Worth taking another look. I see you're already hard at work, Anderson. Close to cracking it? We're just getting started. Let's head down the hill to the crime scene.
Hey, Casey. You putting me in charge. Why now? Look, Anderson, you're a better detective than I am. You crack cases that had the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. Are you thinking of retiring? You know what happens to cops who say this is their last case. Mm-hmm. Real funny, Anderson. Stairs are out. You okay to jump down? I'm not that old. Gives me a headache. It's too much sky. I'm gonna go check something out. Be right back. Got it. Is that a kid's lunchbox? An Alex Casey movie lunchbox. Casey hates the endless jokes about coincidentally having the same name as a fake detective. <laughs> he hates those cheesy crime books, but he really hates the movies.
Welcome back, Anderson. Not a bad place to get murdered. Hmm. If getting back to nature is your thing. Damn. Should have brought an umbrella. I like the rain. The only thing around here that feels like home. You think the local law had the sense to put up a tarp? Hmm. If they did, next coffee's on me. Deputy Thornton, I take it. That's me, at your service, ready to get this case solved. Now the body's behind the store. Come on, I'll show you. So, FBI, huh? That's so cool. Hunting down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob. I'll be back in a second. Roger.
a lunchbox again. Who's leaving these out here? Can't go any further. Water's too deep. This is the scene of the crime. We found him on the table. And we didn't touch nothing. You know, procedures and stuff. Thanks, Deputy. No tarp. You owe me a coffee. Okay. Let's start by examining our guest of honor. Does this fit the MO of the previous murders? Body is positioned on the table.
ritualistic. Another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Coincidence? Finding a Casey movie lunchbox out here can't be a coincidence. Another message? Oh. Makes sense.
doesn't make sense. Step one, examine the corpse. The killer left the heart right next to the body. Bruising on the wrist from the cargo straps holding him down. Inside stab wound, chest cut open, heart removed. That's not right. Okay. Heart removed from chest, strapped by the wrists. Definitely matches the previous murders. But this time the heart and the straps were left behind. More clues to work with. This makes four murders that we know about. Who is our victim? Who killed him? Need to find more clues. Large amount of blood on the table. The victim died here. Multiple people were here. Multiple killers? Someone left in a hurry. Knocked the tripod over. Was it for a camera? Someone was drinking beer. They spent time here, waiting. Any idea who the victim is? Oh, I sure do. His name is Nightingale. He was FBI. He came to town about 13 years ago. Now, I haven't heard a word about him since. Well, until now. Nightingale? Robert Nightingale? Oh, yes. You probably knew him. Brothers in arms. Oh, and sisters. I think I saw something. 
It'll only take a minute. Always here. Hello, this is Agent Anderson and Agent Casey, FBI. We'd like to come in and ask a few questions pertaining to an investigation. Station heads are not currently available. Access is restricted without their permission. Nice talking to you, too. A creepy twig sculpture? Wonder what's inside. I should take a look around for a way to open this thing. Hey there, Mr. Deer. You remind me of a dream I had. Hey, Casey, what's the forest's favorite shape? Please, Anderson, just one case without the rid A triangle. I don't get it. Yes, you do.
getting flashbacks. Remember Ohio? Sure. The North Side Slasher. But that case was completely different. The trees, Anderson. He hid the bodies in the forest. Welcome back, Anderson. Was he so you knew our victim? Well, I didn't recognize... him in his current state but yeah i ran into him a few times at quantico never worked any cases together after his partner got killed in the field he went off the deep end got the boot pretty quick after that so what happened to nightingale after the bureau let him go i only know the rumors depression led to booze booze led to paranoia he got some wild ideas in his head, chased ghosts until he fell off the map. Guess he ended up here. I bet there's more to that story. But no happy ending. Nightingale went missing 13 years ago, 2010. The same as all the other victims. Certainly fits the pattern. Makes me wonder what was going on that year. Probably something this town wants to forget. I think that's everything. Robert Nightingale, ex-FBI. Came to Bright Falls 13 years ago. Okay. Boot prints indicating multiple killers. Quite the party. They planned for the murder to happen here, passing the time with equipment ready. They were waiting for him. Profiling. Get into the subject's head. See what they saw. Feel what they felt. Use whatever I know about them to guide my intuition to a revelation. Piece it together. Us. Agent Nightingale has been MIA for 13 years. How did he end up here? Up from the lake that's not a lake. It's dark. Much graphics checking I see. You are not allowed in the lake until he says otherwise. Robert Nightingale came from the lake. 
before his murder. Nightingale was chosen as the victim. Why? Flick the switch. It goes click. Lights are off. But somebody's home. Somebody's home. This wasn't some random act of violence. This was a ritual. And Nightingale a component. They didn't see him as a person. More like a container for something. This mug always cheers me up. My first ever prank on Casey. A true classic. Casey's favorite brand. Tastes terrible. Eleven remaining. If only the rest of the Bureau knew what a softy Casey is. Miss you, kiddo. I'll be home soon. The lake is connected to Nightingale somehow. Casey, let's take a look down by the lake. Lead the way. Sounds good. Uh, this way, right? Right. Well, okay. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just wait here. This is one of your hunches, Anderson? Did something happen at the lake? I think Nightingale came up from that direction. From the lake. Probably looking for shelter. Safety. They were waiting for him. When you're ready, I'd love to hear what you put together so far. Sure. It's not that complicated. Nightingale was out in the woods alone at night. Possibly nude. The killers knew he was here. Ambushed him. Dragged him to the campgrounds. Strapped him to the table. Cut his heart out. But then they were interrupted by those witnesses, the bookers. The job is unfinished. That seems pretty complicated to me. What was this guy doing skinny dipping at this time of year? Haven't figured that part out yet. Mm-hmm. Lots of questions. Lots of answers for us to find. I didn't know trees got that big. Gives me the creeps. You need to get out more. It is kind of creepy, though. A witch with no FBI heart. shirt I see base version. Strange echo of owl murder. Hmm.
There's a piece of paper on the ground. Tracks. Barefoot. Nightingales? A page full of texts on one side. Not a printout. Written with a typewriter. Old school. Lines scratched out and edits added with a pen. Mm-hmm. Like a manuscript. Page of a story. Hmm. Killer left a message. It's for us. The text is about us. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. And then there was the page they found. The first step down into terrifying depths. Reading, Reading the, the words. words. These, These words, words felt, like a message. felt like a message. Someone knew they were here. Someone playing a game with them. An invitation. How could they not accept? Even if they knew it would end up hurting them. Someone's been watching us. Playing a sick game with us. You were right. This is right up my alley. Nightingale came this way. Either he dropped this page, or the killers left it for us. I should profile Nightingale about this page. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale, gone missing here 13 years ago. Now he had suddenly turned up, only to be murdered in a brutal ritual on the very day of their arrival. And then there was the page. This page, the first page that they had found, not the last. The first step down into terrifying depths, secret truths trembling beyond the threshold. Reading the words, these words, felt like a message was a message. Someone knew they were here, what they were doing. Someone playing a game with them, leading them on. An invitation. How could they not accept? The sheer audacity of this impossible mystery presented to them, even if they knew it would end up hurting them. We found a page in the woods. A story about these events. What is Nightingale's role in this? I carry his words close to my chest now. Inside. The awful truth. You must dig it out. Something was put inside him. In his chest. I must find out what. I think he came from the lake, but his tracks make no sense. Found all I can here. Time to properly examine the body. See what I can find inside. Casey. I think something's been put inside Nightingale's body. Let's tell the deputies to get the body to the town morgue. Okay. Whoever wrote that page made sure it read like a story. Like a scene from a thriller. I hate all of it. The text said we'd find more. I believe it. But what's the purpose? They're twisting events to create their own narrative to do... what? Entertain some fantasy? Projecting their desires? Are we characters or the audience? Witnesses to their design? All the above? It's all about control. Deciding what happens to who. Don't let it drag you in. 
Too late. I'm already hooked. I need the next chapter. Hey, you made it back. Good. I hope you didn't get stuck in any of those big puddles. It's crazy flooding down there, huh? Just like I said. Deputy, I want the body taken back to town for a proper examination, ASAP. Well, sure, but the coroner won't be back in town for another week after Deerfest. Not a problem. I'll do it myself. Oh, and Sheriff Breaker called to say he's got the bookers at the Oh Dear Diner in town. Oh, and I've got a key to the gate. It's a shortcut back to the parking lot just up the hill. Thanks. Let's get the car, drive to Bright Falls, and talk to these witnesses, the bookers. At the diner, right? I, I could use a cup of coffee. Let's try that shortcut the deputy mentioned. Sounds good. Seems like a nice town so far. Murders aside, pretty woods. Cute lodge we got set up in. We should go for a hike if we get a chance. Now you're just being mean, Anderson. Deputies aren't exactly up to the task, but hopefully the sheriff will be more helpful. Not a surprise about the deputies. Doubt they see much stuff this gruesome. Fit the clues all together yet. Heart removed, tripod, tracks leading to a dead end. A tripod for a camera? To record a, a snuff film? Maybe. And why take out his heart just to throw it away? To stuff in something for us to find. Here we are. Let's drive back to town and meet the sheriff at the diner. I can't get that manuscript page out of my head. I've never seen killers reach out so directly before. Damn impressive work so far. With your technique, these hunches were moving fast. I wasn't sure about taking a case so far from home, but I'm thrilled to be here for this mystery. Need to swing by the lodge to get anything from the field office? No, I'm all set. I'll park there anyway. I want to walk to the diner, get a feel for the town.
The diner's just up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. Just how much coffee have you had today, Charlie? <laughs> don't know, don't care. <laughs> how much have you had? Not enough. That's how much. Never enough coffee. Oh, that rich, bittersweet nectar. Get it in coffee world. Get it where you can. Get it now. Jesus, Charlie. Not to toot my own horn, but I am pretty darn sure my, <laughs> I mean our, float will be the belle of the ball at this year's Deer Fest. Just a few more days. It's a nice looking float for sure. This is my first Deer Fest, so I don't know what to expect, really. It is the finest entertainment a town like ours has I'm gonna to go offer. check something out. Happiest day of the year. Be right back. Like, got it. But better. <laughs> well, I certainly hope so. Oh, dear. I hate the holiday. Cute. Hello. How's it going? Let me guess. The FBI. Welcome to Bright Falls. It's nice to have you here. I got you both some coffee. Oh, it's Washington's finest. I'll be back in a second. Roger. I need to go back. Got a case to solve. That concludes our debate on whether pets should Mercetta won't roll over on the issues. Any interesting guests lately? Any good finds? Zilch. But someone left a gross surprise under their bed for housekeeping? They were nuts. So... That's what all that screaming was about? Either that. Or the couple on their honeymoon. Hi! Man, it is sweating in these suits. Isn't it? Charlene? Are you as uncomfortable as I am? 
You don't think the amount of hot, caffeinated beverages you've downed has anything to do with it? I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh, I'm in hell. Swamp ass city. Ugh. Change of topic, please. Welcome back, Anderson. Nice to meet you, Sheriff. I'm set for coffee. You know, I wouldn't say no to another. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Tim Brinker. And let me just say, I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No, no, the bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. Casey, you compare notes with the sheriff. Take your time. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. Have you had many people besides the known victims go missing? Sure. But it's slowed down ever since Culver Light was fast off. I'm gonna guess. Missing person cases spiked around 2010. The fence was built just after. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hmm. Hey, how's it going? I can't believe that happened. I still feel like I'm gonna be sick. Come on, Ed. Have some pie. Don't take your mind off things. Rest easy, buddy. Can't open this with my bare hands. I can't get through this. Excuse me. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy, and he's Ed. Oh, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So, are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about, okay? What were you doing at Colgin late last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. So what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake, and he was acting crazy, shouting weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos in deer masks. They were tearing into the naked guy with knives, like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted and called the cops. 
What makes you say it was a cult? <laughs> the masks and knives aren't enough. Min, they were shouting, Cult of the tree. The cult of the tree. Cult of the tree. Oh, oh. and then we found a... The whole thing was terrifying. That's all. The cult of the tree. What are the bookers telling me? I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The cult wants their spruce tree back, Tammy. Finder's keeper is Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? Prince was built to hide what's there. They say the rider fell in the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions. Past the bolt cutters. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with a the murder. They were telling the truth. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. You need to hand it over. Okay. Okay. Told you not to keep that thing, Jimmy. Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we have any more questions. <laughs> like we'd even dream of missing dear friend. Oh, God. Saga! Saga Anderson. As I live and breathe. We'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. How are you? Um, I'm sorry. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose. You know me. I don't think I do. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? She drowned. Your daughter? That's so weird, you don't remember. How do you know I have a daughter? Oh, I know what this is. You're blocking out your traumatic memories. Happens on TV all the time. No. You're mistaking me for someone else. <laughs> if you say so. We're dealing with... I need to know more about the code of the tree if I'm going to shut them down. Better keep an eye out for more. Okay. Think.
So, Rose, help me out. How do you think we know each other? We all know each other around here. It's been a while, but I never forget a face. Or a coffee order. Guess I just have one of those faces. Seen anything out of the ordinary in town lately? Suspicious people in deer masks? No one's suspicious. But soon enough, there'll be lots of happy people wearing deer masks for deer fest. Practically everyone will be wearing one. Good to know. these rural types can be. A cult murdering a man is pretty extreme. Why didn't you tell the police what you saw? We did. We told those two idiot deputies they didn't listen. And they wanted to throw Ed and I in jail for that murder. You know, Bright Falls is just Alabama with bigger trees. This is my case now, and no one is throwing you in jail. If you need anything else, just come to me. Got it. Thank you. So. All set? My guys have Nightingale at the morgue if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. Well, Casey, I got a lead. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The cult of the tree. A murder cult. Have you heard of this cult of the tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. If you're in the woods at night, the cult will get you. That sort of thing. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? I played some D&D &D back in the day. The wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, Sheriff! Looks like you have some guests. Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true! More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. She always has been. Why? What'd she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. But it's best not to take it personally. Hey, boss. Corpse is downstairs ready to go. Yep, in the morgue, all prepped. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. Oh, this is the Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Anything you need, just uh, let us know. We appreciate the support, Sheriff. I'll be right with you, sir. Yep, yep. I can't get Just through this. Pay my ticket whenever you're ready to take my money. They locked up an innocent man. I swear I didn't do anything. They're a lying bunch of bastards. You believe me, right? Speeding happening here, I see. Sir, some patience, please.
Agent? As you know, the investigation is being taken over by the federal agents. Sheriff Breaker wants us to cooperate fully. Aye, aye, ma'am. I'm being serious, Nelson. Oh, dear. I am a tourist, and it appears that I'm lost in the woods. We've only had a tour guide, also. It's bear season. Oh, no. A bear. Help. Did somebody call for a tour guide? Oh, wow. Koskala Brothers Adventure Tours. Unforgettable tour experiences at affordable prices. That's right. I'm Ilmo Koskala voted best coffee roaster slash tour guide by Coffee World magazine. And I'm here to give you the tour of a lifetime. But Ilmo, I've heard the government has seized and restricted access to many local nature attractions. But it's true, Yanko. Many local attractions have recently become fenced off by the government. And that's why at Coscola Brothers Adventure Tours, we say, fuck the government. We have both cutters. Oh, wow. You think of everything. And we'll take you anywhere. Hiking through the scenic Elderwood National Park. Fishing in the crystal clear waters of Bright Falls Dam. Bird watching at Majestic Mirror Peak. Tour of a lifetime is just one phone call away. Book now to get a 9% discount on this limited edition Oh Dear Diner Coffee Thermal. So we share a morgue with the funeral home next door. It's a shoestring budget. I guess you guys don't have that problem, though. Our only coroner rotates between a few other towns and he's away this week, but you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations. Yes. Something about the morgues. They always cheer me up. I can't say I feel the same. Not opening. Okay, let's take a look at our patient. I'll start with the external inspection before performing the internal examination. What was the cause of death? What other clues can the body give me? There's writing on here can't make it out. Writing? How'd they manage that? The body shows signs of being submerged in water post-mortem. It doesn't add up. Aha! Uh -huh. 
They did leave something inside his chest. This looks like text. A tattoo? Nightingale didn't strike me as a tattoo guy. Defensive wounds. He put up a fight. Time to see what Nightingale's body can tell us. Text is smudged. Looks inverted. Heart can't have been marked before removal. There's definitely something in his chest. Did the killers leave it there? Type of page we found at Cauldron Lake. Nightingale hunted Saga. Didn't see her. The Taken could not see into bright light. Light hurt them, made them vulnerable. Nightingale had no heart, but here he was. Killing. Someone's created a fucked up fantasy about us. Hey, hold on. We found these kinds of pages. I didn't think they were relevant to this case. I have them right here. Guns out in the hall. Gotta get it back. Go. Oh, 
room. I need to find it. He didn't have a heart, but he still got up. The page predicted all of it. It helped me fight him. Oh, oh, oh. He, he just disappeared? What the hell is going on here? We need to figure that out if we're going to do anything about it. Somehow we need to make sense of this. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. Saga had to pursue Nightingale. Into the overlap. Finding a way in would be difficult. A ritual. Saga would learn how. Stop the monster. Right before things got crazy, Sheriff Breaker just vanished. Maybe the Sheriff knew more than he was letting on. Hmm. He seemed anxious, like he dreaded what was coming. One more mystery. There is no rational explanation to what we just saw. I'd love to blame this on mass hallucination caused by inhaling volcanic gas, but we both know that's bullshit. This was supernatural. Well, I'm glad you were the one to say it. Now we can figure out a way forward. Did the fucker take it with him? The victim of a ritualistic murder turns into a monster. Is there a connection? Looks to me like the cult of the tree is performing rituals to create monsters. Hmm, maybe. We need to start with learning this cult's goal, their purpose. Killers are usually the ones performing the ritual, not the detective. Acting out their sick fantasy. They may be trying to get you involved, forcing you into their twisted world. Hmm.
think? dead man turned into a monster. Light as a way to fight him. Pages predicting the future? There's no rational explanation. This is the case we must solve. The cold of the tree is behind these murders. This case just became much more complicated. I'll need to start a new file. But it's my first cold case. Exciting. Page places Nightingale back at Cauldron Lake. Calls him a Taken. We need to head over there, stop him, before anyone else gets hurt. Okay. We, we heard gunshots, y'all okay? Did you get spooked by the bodies? Sheriff Breaker disappeared. Nightingale turned into some sort of a monster, and there are offices down. You two handle things here. We need to get back to Cauldron Lake immediately. Fuck me. That's terrible. But we'll do what we can, man. But that's crazy, right, Thornton? Nightingale's heart was missing. How could he do anything? He's dead. Well, yeah, right. Well, that's all crazy talk. Monsters aren't real, and what do you mean the, the sheriff disappeared? Like, poof? He's gone like magic? Magic's not real. Magic's not real. Right, Mulligan? No, Thorn. Monsters aren't real, and magic's definitely not real. <laughs> I knew that. Fine pair. My client has been held here long enough. Are you gonna let me speak to them or not? Uh, just a moment, ma'am. Someone will be right with you. Hey, how you doing? Nightingale and his cult are dangerous. 
We need to be prepared in case things escalate more than they already have. Can you call it in, Casey? A smart choice, Anderson. Yeah, a Agent Casey here. Yeah. We need backup. The Bright Falls case. Whoever you can spare. ASAP. Think we'll actually fight. The pages haven't been wrong yet. We can't assume the person writing these pages isn't playing us. I agree. But it's our best lead. I'm going to take a quick look around. Meet you back at the car. See you in a bit. Have a nice day. A locked box. Is that the cult of the tree symbol on it? Notes and ammo. Looks like they're tools of the trade. with my bare hands. So what's good here? Any nice restaurants? A bit of a foodie. Well, uh, the restaurants and shops in town are closed at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, they'll have a grand reopening right after Deerfest, though. So if you're sticking around till hey, then... Hey, how's it going? Oh, I don't think I am. Whatever a Deerfest even is. <laughs> oh. Hello. Oh, well, there's always our own restaurant at New York City. I feel bad for these guys.
Check out the town, Anderson? Just getting my bearings. I need to come clean, Anderson. I know why Nightingale was here 13 years ago. He was chasing a writer, Alan Wake. Tammy mentioned him. She's writing a book on his disappearance. You know the detective character from his books, Alex Casey. Yeah, I've heard the jokes at the office. Cold case Casey. Murder case Casey. <laughs> Sorry. Ha uh ha. -huh. It's the same name, similar job. It's the first thing anyone thinks of. It annoyed me, but that was it. Then, ten years ago, I started getting strange letters in the mail. Fragments of prose describing murders you've heard the stories about what happened in new york some of it at least bodies started to pile up it was a murder cult turns out the fragments sent to me were from the crime books of alan wake the cult was copycatting the murders from the books in their heads they were performing a ritual to bring wake back their imagined prophet after that case, I started looking into Wake's disappearance on the side. And you thought this case might be connected to him? His name does keep popping up. I just wanted you to have all the facts. Next time, give them to me before we find ourselves in the middle of a horror story. The page says Nightingale's in something called an overlap. Need to figure out exactly what that means. I'm happy I'm not in charge of this mess. Thanks. Let's start looking for Nightingale where he was killed. Great. This area is supposed to be close to the public. <laughs> 